We've surveyed our patients to make sure that it's a good experience for them and um, overwhelmingly the patients have been very positive in terms of this type of approach. Commonly referred to as a transradial cardiac catheterization, this approach has been shown to result in less bleeding, earlier ambulation, and increased patient comfort for those who qualify for the procedure when compared to catheterizations performed using femoral artery access. In the past, accessing the coronary arteries during a cardiac catheterization was done through the femoral artery. The femoral artery is large in diameter, nearly the size of a thumb. This makes sealing it after the procedure more difficult. Now, with access through the much smaller in diameter radial artery, many potential post-procedure complications are avoided. Prior to the procedure, a nurse administers medication through a vein for sedation. The interventional cardiologist then delivers a local anesthetic to the wrist and inserts a tube or sheath into the radial artery. Medications are given through the sheath to relax the radial artery, which may cause a temporary burning sensation in the patient's upper extremity. A blood thinner, heparin, is also given to help prevent clots from forming. The catheter is then advanced through the sheath and guided to the heart and the coronary angiogram and stent placement, if necessary, is performed. Once the procedure is complete, the catheter and sheath are removed from the radial artery and a transradial, or TR band, is placed on the wrist, which is typically worn for two hours, providing pressure to prevent bleeding. The patient is allowed to sit up immediately after the procedure. It is recommended that no undue stress be put on the radial artery as it heals. Patients are asked to avoid flexing the wrist and lifting anything heavier than one pound for five days, such as suitcases or grocery bags. Patients should otherwise be able to use the hand for activities such as eating and writing. Benefits to the patient are numerous and include fewer complications, fewer major bleeding events compared to femoral artery access, earlier ambulation, decreased time on bed rest, increased patient comfort, especially for those who have difficulty lying flat. For example, patients with congestive heart failure, those with back pain, and bariatric patients. Most disadvantages of the femoral technique are non-existent in the radial approach. Even in obese patients, the radial artery is close to the skin surface, making the initial needle puncture simple and straightforward. For the same reason, when the procedure has been completed, a short compression of the artery can stop hemostasis. Should any bleeding occur, it can be seen immediately. Unlike the proximity of the femoral artery to the femoral nerve, the radial artery is not close to a major nerve, so the likelihood of nicking a nerve during the procedure is very low. Any invasive procedure carries some risk of bleeding. Using the radial artery rather than the femoral artery reduces the risk of bleeding from the puncture site, particularly in patients who are obese or require blood thinning agents. There are, however, risks unique to the radial artery catheterization. Though rare, spasm of the muscles lining the wall of the radial artery may be experienced. This can make it difficult for the cardiologist to maneuver the catheter and may cause the patient discomfort. This is temporary and can be prevented and treated with medications in the majority of cases. Occasionally, it can be severe enough to necessitate switching to the femoral artery approach. Another rare but potential risk is clot formation. Heparin is given during the procedure to help prevent this. 50 units per kilogram is generally administered. When radial artery occlusion does occur, it generally causes no long-term problems because there are redundant blood supplies to the hand. There are some patients for whom the radial artery approach would not be used. They include those with an abnormal Allen's test, signifying poor collateral circulation, seen in approximately 5 to 10 percent of the population. We perform uh, something called an Allen's test on every patient that comes into our lab. So this ensures that the patient has two blood vessels that are healthy and widely open, supplying the hand. Other patients for whom the radial artery approach would not be used include patients with upper extremity vascular disease or Raynaud's disease, and those patients for whom the radial artery is being considered for use during bypass surgery, 
for those who may require future arteriovenous fistulas for hemodialysis. We now have uh, a lot of experience with this approach. All of our operators are very comfortable from the radial approach, so I think it's, um, it's here to stay. While the complication rate with the radial approach is extremely low, there is always some risk, as with any medical procedure. It is important for physicians and patients to discuss the risks and benefits of the femoral versus radial approach, as they can vary for each individual.